All right. Today we're going to be meeting someone who has experienced history firsthand. Uh, the Vietnam War was part of United States history. It took place during the Cold War era. Uh, first off, can you? What's your name? It's Julio Alvarado. Okay. Let's see, and uh, how old are you, Julio? I'm sixty-two. Sixty-two years young. Let's see. And uh, where were you born? I was born in Puerto Rico. Let's see. Can you tell me a little about uh, home life? Um, you know, back in Puerto Rico. Well, I grew up in the country, where we live off the land. I mean, we survive. It was good life. I mean, we, we had no electricity, no running water, but we survived. We managed, and we lived off what was uh, produced for the land. The land. Uh, I came into the United States. My mother, uh, to be able to help us survive, she came into the states to work and left my brother and I with my aunt in Puerto Rico where she worked as a, in a factory and at the age of 10 she sent for me, brought me to the States and I've been in the States ever since. So um, you were part of the, you took part in the Vietnam War, uh, what year was that? Uh, the Vietnam War, I was the, I was in Vietnam, I went to Vietnam for a boot camp in uh, 67, I was a six to, uh, 67, and I was uh, went to Vietnam after that, 12 week of uh, boot camp training in the Marine Corps, I volunteered, and I graduated high school first of all, and at that time the draft was very heavy, there was no, no number draft, you were being drafted, so as soon as I graduated, I volunteered, went to the Marine Corps. Two weeks later, I got my draft notice for the Army. And I went to my uh, boot camp training, and from the uh, boot camp, I went directly to Vietnam. I see. Uh, what age did you enlist? At 18. You were 18? Okay. Did you have to go through anything special in order to get in, or was it they just accepted you right away? No, they accepted you right away. Okay. You know, the aptitude test was very simple. Uh, did a bunch of, uh, did your friends go with you? I had some most of everybody that I graduated at that, that time was either drafted or volunteered. There was no, no way out. You know. Let's see. Uh, did you agree with the draft or were you, how did you feel about it? Was, the, was it by choice that you went into this or was it solely because you absolutely had to? Well, by choice I, I went in, but actually you had to go so you, would, you, uh, you had to register and you were drafted. So you know, no matter what, you were going. And how long was your, um, how long were you there in Vietnam? I told you in Vietnam was technically supposed to have been 13 months. And I was there for about six. And I was doing, uh, I was wounded during that offensive, 1968. It was a turning point of the war. Hmm. Let's see. And then, um, do you remember the month and the day that that happened? Oh. I was wounded in uh, I was in January, nineteen sixty-eight. Can you um, summarize your experiences that you had there? It was a point of uh, a life with you know, in the service. It made me grow. It turned me into a man. And my experience in Vietnam was. It's like you were fighting for your country and you were surviving. It was a, a do or die situation. Uh, you know, you did what you had to do. And I felt what I did, I was sent to do and I tried to do it as best as I could and that was, you know, that was it. I mean, you know, there was no other objective. I mean, you know, you were sent, you fought, you know, you tried to survive. How much uh, training did you go through before you actually went to Vietnam? Uh, I did 12 weeks in between Paris Island and Camp Lejeune. Okay, and did you have any kind of combat experience before that or any kind of uh, battle experience? No, not at all. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Um, what was coming home like for you? Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Vietnam was a hated war. It was more hated here than it was over there. Over there we dealt with the drugs 
Maybe we thought that everybody that was in the service and during the Vietnam was a junkie because all we, uh, all the, everybody came back, it was uh, affected by the drugs and all that stuff and people here uh, were negative with the war. Technically it wasn't a war, it was a, uh, a conflict. It was never a, a call of war by Congress, it was a conflict. So when we came back to the States, we had no welcoming home or anything like that. It was just, uh, I was spat on, I was rejected from work, from jobs. I was, uh, I mean, going on and on about how people are, how we were more abused here than we actually were in Vietnam and the Vietnamese, you know, the, the negative support of the people here was terrible, you know. That's a shame. Do you, I mean, do you still feel angry at those people? At the oh, way not at all, not at all. It's, I mean, they didn't know what it was. I, you know, I, I was wounded. I lost a leg, and it, at that time, there were so many Americans that were wounded, and there were something like fifty-five thousand that were killed or, or wounded, and people didn't realize hadn't seen in years of a person you know, missing a limb or missing something and it was like a uh, something terrible, you know, going to the beach or walking around in crutches with part of your body missing, people looked like you, like you were uh, uh, something terrible, you know, you weren't normal. Were you surprised at the way that you were received when you yes. came back to the States? Yes, I was. Yes, I was. Okay. So you had no idea. Nobody had told you anything about the way. Did you know how people were reacting to the war before you came back? No. You had no idea. No, I had no idea. I figured people were going to be different. You know, the only people that you would find that were different with you were the ones that went uh, during career and they came back and they re your own comrades mm -hmm. from our previous wars were the only ones that you know realized what you were going through. Other than that, people that had never. I've only seen it on TV, but I haven't even seen it t at that time. Vietnam wasn't even televised like anything else is now. And it was like, a, you were the enemy. We weren't friendly. We were the enemy. Wow. Now, the people that you were trying to help in Vietnam, how, how did they receive you when you, when you came there to their aid? <laughs> <laughs> they received us facing us in good conditions because we gave him candies and we gave him good things. But when you turn around, it was a different story. You never knew who was good or who was bad. You know, uh, kids could come up to you and say, hey, G.I. Joe, but actually they would, all of a sudden they'd drop a grenade in front of you and run away, blow you up. It was like nothing. So you never, you never knew who was friendly uh, or who was enemy. Was it only the North Koreans that were Attacking you guys, or were you attacked by the South Koreans as well? No, I was attacked by the guerrillas from the South and the North. You know, it, it was all a big conflict of, from all around. So we were, we didn't know, we never knew who was friendly or who was enemy. Now, what rank did you receive when you were, when you were in there? I was Lance Corporal. And uh, what was the name of your platoon? My platoon was a uh, uh, Bravo. That's the United States Marines. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Okay. Uh, can you do you draw any comparisons with the current war that we're having right now with the Vietnam War? Do you see any similarities? No, I just the only difference I see is that the people from Iraq, the, which I mean, you know, I have nothing against that because they they're fighting just as we did, but they're getting recognition where we didn't we didn't get any. You know, they're getting acknowledgement. But we didn't get any. So, um, I mean, we, when uh, they come out, they get, uh, they go for psychological uh, treatment also. We didn't get nothing. We were just sent home and whatever happened, happened. If you went crazy and shut somebody up, you shut it up and that was it. You know, now, you know, my comparison, I, I really, you know, the only thing I feel bad about is that we didn't get that, that, that recognition that they are getting, you know, by the people, the American people.
And do you think the American people, do you think they've come to realize the sacrifices that you guys went through in Vietnam, that maybe they've lessened their harsh views over the years? Or do you think that there's still a stigma? Is there still a view that you guys were just out there for all the wrong reasons? I think there's still, still a stigma and they still think that we were there for the wrong, wrong reason. But you know, 20 years too late, 30 years too late, you know, I wanted to happen when I came home. When I left New York, the mayor of New York City, Mayor Koch, did a parade to welcome the veteran, Vietnam veteran, veterans home. But I had been home already 15 years. So what was the purpose? Whoa. And I wanted to be, you know, I wanted to, uh, you know, when you watch the movies, you know, the ships come in, the wives, the girlfriends, and family, mm -hmm. out there with all their flags and cheering. The ticket that's tape. What, the ticket tape, that's yeah. what I wanted. That's what I was looking for. You know, not 15 years later. That's understandable, considering everything and the sacrifices that you made over there. Um, do you do you feel upset when you hear people saying that this current war is exactly like the Vietnam War? People who are misguided and who are just trying to draw connections. I do bigger because it wasn't. We were undersupplied, undermanned. Uh, we were sent to fight a war we didn't know anything about. Uh, I mean, I was in Vietnam, and it was a week before I got a rifle. Once I got the rifle, I had no ammo. Once I got ammo, I didn't have a magazine, so I had to wait for a, a comrade to get wounded, a Marine to get wounded, so I could, you know, get his uh, magazines or his ammo for him, or his water canteens, or his supplies. Now the, uh, the soldiers are going in, they are full, su su full supply, full, you know, everything. I mean, I mean they they can they can't they can one anything. They have all kinds of rations. We have we, we were still eating. I was in Vietnam. I was still eating Korea uh, sea rations, which a little can you know, a box, you know, with little cans in it. You know, and that was it. You know, no steaks, no mashed potatoes. You know, so nothing like <laughs> nothing, none of nothing, the good nothing, stuff. None of the good stuff. You know, everything was, you know. Not even good old Budweiser. No, no, not even that. Not even that. <laughs> yeah. As um, how do people view you now, when in your job and in your work and your daily life? When they ask you, you know, um, what war you took place in, and you know where you did your service and stuff like that, is there more respect? Uh, there is now. There is. I, I guess with Iraq, and I gotta give that credit because now when you people ask you, they tell you, and they say, "Well, Vietnam." You know, they come up and they thank you for the time you serve and, you know, trying to maintain this country free, you know, and everybody else around. So, you know, it, it's changed a little bit. And, you know, people are more respectful in that sense. That's good. It's kind of necessary. Yeah. It should be. It I mean. should be. Okay. So, well, Mr. Alvarado, like to, I would like to formally thank you very much for your service that you've done for the country. And I want to thank you for the sacrifices that you've made for us and for our freedom and for the freedoms of the South Vietnamese people, you know, they were not really appreciative, apparently. Um, is there any closing comments that you would like to say um, to the future educators of America? Well, you know, we need to keep this country free. And what we do when we go into another country to fight, to try to uh, give them independence, we do it for a reason. I mean, it's not only economically, but it's to try to maintain uh, civil rights along for the world, and I think what we're doing in Iraq and Afghanistan, in, in, in partially, it's the right thing to keep independence and keep this country free and keep it free from uh, retaliation from anybody else. You know that's the way it should be. You know we gotta protect. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we appreciate it. I thank you, and America thanks you. Thanks. <laughs> Um, just one thing to add to the video, uh, Julio, can you show us what sacrifice you've made for our country? <laughs> Marine Corps. <laughs> and how long have you had that? Uh, 42 years. Are you used to it now? Yes. Amazing. Thank you again, Julio. Yeah. You're welcome.